He came out and he was just like, oh, I've been oh, I've been away for a couple months. Uh, no, I haven't. And no, he no still I did really well. Yeah. He still did really well. There's no such thing as taking a break from Smash. It's just disappearing from your immediate tournament scene and uh, I come back and body you guys. It's just a Z-axis, dude. It's a Z -axis. <laughs> That's where you go. You disappear for a little bit. Exactly. Oh, my goodness. Anyways, the other side of winner's semifinals, Smash World Gaming's Jason against Smash Factor Huga. Mm. You see Mook in the background. He's going to make be making comments about Jason's Fox the whole game. Probably. I mean, they, they, they both my do Fox made the same character. My Fox would have up right there. <laughs> I would have got that up, Smash Goku. Mook's a funny dude. Dude, Mook is hilarious. He's a, he's a funny dude. I'm definitely happy that uh, that he's uh, he's he's back on in the Shockwave stage at least for this week. Dude, it's always good to see old people coming back. I was super stoked. Yeah, I was really sad. I mean, he like we said, he uh, w because of school and work. Uh, that's why we haven't seen him nearly as much. Yeah. But let's see who's gonna win come out on top in this battle. Huga has mentioned that this is a matchup where Toon Link does struggle, and we're starting to see why. Fox has great mobility, which he utilizes for his fantastic punish game, and that should be able to make him weave through the minefield of bombs and boomerangs that Huga will be dishing out here. I just want to talk a second about how creative Huga is. Did you see at the very start of the match, he got that grab set up where even if Jason had mashed out because it was low percent, he very well could have mashed out of that grab. He would have got hit by the boomerang coming back regardless. There was nothing he could do in that situation. Jason has uh, demonstrated a, a much better grasp on some of these Hyrule-oriented characters as of late, taking Karna to game five in the last regional. And wow, actually taking the first stock in this game as well at only 22%. Yuga may be patient, but Jason loves playing the patient oh game. Oh my goodness, but he can't land. Oh, brutal punishment from Yuga right back into the game. All right, Toon Link's sword may be a butter knife, but it's still a disjoint, and it's still big enough to give Fox a little bit of trouble coming down. You know, yeah, I completely agree. Fox falling so quickly is certainly going to be falling right into the trap that is that butter knife. Man. And he's also an incredibly light character as well. These aerials and smash attacks, they're deceivingly strong. Ooh. Jason calling out that spot dodge, we're able to cover it with that jab, but then wasn't able to get anything off. Wow, such a creative usage of the shine to stall his momentum in the air, preventing Huga from finding the follow-up. I think that Jason, uh, and uh, another thing about it, doesn't Jason play a lot with Hylin as well, online? I would not doubt it. Yeah, he, he feels very comfortable here. There is no match of familiarity. I mean, he, is this, is this really happening? I mean, Jason is very, very patient. Yeah. Uh, I would not be surprised if he was able to handle a tune like that. I mean, no. we're, we're not going to see the two stock, and here's where things can get tricky. Those up tilts go on for days. That's 40% off of that punish. And beyond that, Jason does not have nearly as reliable KO setups as Huga does. I mean, he's looking for these down airs, hoping that Huga will drop shield. But shield here is just such a powerful option, whereas Huga in the late game has way more access to a variety of tools to ensure he can close the game out. If Huga's forced to hold a bomb while he's shielding, though, Jason might actually be able to go for a silly shield break setup. Fox has some silly stuff. I mean, if Huga's holding shield while he's got a bomb, he gets hit by like a nair coming down and the bomb goes off, he's stuck in the shield. Jason could easily break it with like a forward smash or up beyond his shield and get some extra craziness. Jason's demonstrated some solid moments on defense, but yet to find that moment on offense. Huga on the verge of making this comeback happen. He was down by so much on the verge of getting two stocked, but Jason very nearly found it. Gets the air dodge that he wanted to seal that game with the bear. That was pretty crazy. Now, we were able to see because of how patient both players were and how long that game went on, Huga adapted pretty heavily. They were able to bring it back to a very, very close game. Jason was still able to close it out, though. So I want to see both players continue to adapt in this next game and see how close we can get this. Yeah, that mean, what, what sort of adaptations did you pick up on uh, from Huga? I mean, really, he was able to just sit comfortably 
in his shield and not get put into the air nearly as easily. Yeah, it, it felt like even though he was down so much in percentage, he never felt pressure, mm -hmm. which is so important. Uh, sometimes the scariest fox is the one that doesn't push a button because you're so conditioned on thinking what he could do from that position. Yuga, he never felt that pressure. He knows this matchup, and we're seeing him starting to make the adjustments he needs against Jason. A much better start so far. I was, I was wondering what Jason was going to do to get out of the corner. So far, we saw him use the dash attack. And in air, he's been prone to use this shine to stall his momentum. Do you think Hugo's going to be adapting to that as well? I mean, that's definitely going to be a trick, is how do you adapt to this shine? Am I going to, like, how is he going to bait it out? And then what is he going to do to punish? Because if he's sitting there in shine, he can just kind of hold it for as long as he needs to. It's, it becomes a game of chicken. That's up a little strong bear for Jason. Another bear should do it. Oh, going all in on the F smash. And he's going to get punished with that bomb into up air. Now down to his last stock. Huga is at a pretty hefty percentage here. Oh, my goodness. Missing the confirm by missing the run a slightly, I believe. Nerves may be getting to him. Jason has been a been considered a very strong player in our area for so for a couple of months, but I think this is the first time he's going against someone of this star caliber. I mean, he did get to play stage. yeah on the shockwave. He did get to play against Larry Lur recently. He got one set against him at uh, it was TGC. Uh, uh it was uh, Caddy. It was Caddy. Yeah, I get my events confused. Yeah, so many acronyms. It's tough. So and now we're seeing a reversal of that last game. Hugo was in this very position, boasting such a heavy lead. And actually, now we're seeing Jason in the hot seat. He doesn't have nearly as many kill confirms as Hugo did to well, take the stock. Look at how low Hugo's shield was right there. You can tell that he can't just hold shield indefinitely because if his bomb goes off while he's in the shield, he's open to a free setup. Now, that bomb does go off after six seconds. Automatic. I see Hugo holding it for that long, necessarily. I mean, if Jason's got the pressure on, we'll see. Very true, very true. And he's starting to put that pressure right now, but Hugo finds the bomb into Bear. Oh, oh he didn't no. have a jump. Hoping for a very tricky recovery. Potentially to limit the the the, uh, the potential of, uh, of a bomb into Ariel, or even mm -hmm. just a raw Ariel out there. Yeah, he wanted to avoid somebody, he, he wanted to avoid being intercepted right there. He wanted to make it a little bit harder to go for like the straight up angle. Also, checks that he just fell way too fast. Yeah. <laughs> Fox falls like a rock. Yeah. So now tied up at one apiece. And on and battle. Yeah, on, on battlefield. Jason, uh, with this pick, you know, I'll be honest, neighbor, I have some mixed feelings here. I, on one hand, Fox benefits a lot off of these platforms. You can run off with these aerials and put on that extra pressure. But at the same time, this gives Huga so much more room to maneuver. We that's, yeah, that's very true. It will make him harder to land a little bit, being caught on these platforms, but if he's not just actively trying to defensively land, he has a lot of room to place traps. And then, you know, I guess the flip side of that flip side is Fox does have the mobility, again, to keep up with Toon Link. And so there's a good chance that Jason might want to almost bait you into going into these platforms and then find punishes. And these follow-ups are just not doing what they need to right now out of Jason. He gets like an up air or two, but he's not able to trap you the way that he was able to in game one. Oh, Hugo still is able to confirm off of these bombs so consistently. And he's actually starting to punish this shine as well. Up he smash. The roll. That's the thing is against Toon Link. He wants to drop the bomb near your shield and force you to get out of there. And once you move, he will catch you. Yeah, that's what he did by throwing the bomb straight up on the ledge. Jason had to make a move, and Huga caught him just as he pushed the button. Punishment, it's, it's, it's never ceasing. It's so constant. This lead from Huga continuing to grow. That was really, really strange by Jason. Back air. But good DI makes him live. And I don't know how many lives Jason has left up air. That up air lasts for so long. Huga just starting to wait for Jason to choose a defensive option. Knows he needs just one aerial from this position. 
Oh, he caught the air dodge with that up air, but he only got the weak hit. Now, is this a percent where it, it's tough for Toon Link to find the follow-ups off of the bombs? Is there a chance that the bomb might send Jason too high? There is a chance, but at this point, if he's able to catch Jason in his shield, and, uh, like he can call him out with that up smash, or if he's able to grab him for sitting in shield, back throw is definitely an option. Yeah. Or you could just fling him all the way across the stage, you know? He really, at that position, he was playing with the entire deck. Yeah. And Jason had such limited options. Forced to play defense, nowhere really to go. Like, Still, 2-1. All I got left is the Queen of Hearts. Yeah. So go fish. Go fish. Go fish. Man. I mean, it was a really good game one, but the adaptations out of Hugo were just too much. No, agreed. Yeah. Completely agreed. I think a lot of that also has to do with how different Fox can play as a character between person to person. When you run into a new style of Fox, it can be really difficult adapting to what he chooses to do and when. And that can give you the edge in the game one. But if you're not able to adapt back to your opponent and they are able to figure out what style of Fox you are, it might be rough for you. And he would like, he just has it, doesn't he? Like everything, right? Like he, like like he'll he'll be like in those positions, and even when he's like down so much, he's like thinking along the lines of like, okay, even if I lose this game, what do I do to win the next one? Yeah. And he's just like he's just like, well, how many situations can I set up? So by the time it gets to game number three, I know I'm gonna put it in the bank. The main thing is he was able to get Jason a roll. That's the thing is if he he a lot of the time you'd see him run straight past Jason and get the up smash for the roll. Mm -hmm. Or run straight past him, he would get a grab. Run straight past him, and Jason is moving. He couldn't stay still. Yeah, I mean, if, well, especially you know, as someone who plays fast characters, mm -hmm. yeah. I want to move. Yeah. I, I want to, I, if, if I'm standing still, it just feels bad.